can you edit videos on an external hard drive? The short answer is yeah, sure you can. And if that's all you came for, bye. Hope you guys found value in this video. But if you want some more details and some tips and tricks on how to do it well, stay tuned because I've been editing videos on external drives for about three years now with great success on not a very high spec laptop either. So let's get into it. Since you're watching this video, you probably don't need me to tell you why you might want to edit on an external hard drive. But just in case you haven't thought about it much, I've got three words for you. Storage space. Video files are huge, especially 4K, even 6K videos like I'm working with sometimes now. They're ginormous, and if you can keep all those on an external drive, you can free up space on your internal drive for it to do all its internal drivey things, you know, booting up and holding all your apps and things like that. So I first started editing on an external drive about three years ago when I just gotten back from my first really big, large scale overlanding camping trip that I had filmed. It's the one I would later call God's Country and I made a whole film about it and it hasn't made it to this YouTube channel yet. We'll see if it ever does. But anyway, even though I shot it in 1080p at the time, it was about 100 gigabytes and I only had about 120 gigabytes of free space on my laptop. So I knew I wanted to keep it on an external drive somehow. Since that time, I've gotten a new computer, a desktop with 11 terabytes of storage, and it's got a spinning disk hard drive and also uh, three terabytes of solid state memory. The whole storage thing has become much less of an issue, except look at me now. I'm not in my office. I'm in a hotel room on a work trip in Philadelphia right now, and I'm back to working off my little 256 gigabyte laptop here. So even though I've graduated in my daily workflow, external drive editing is still a big part of my work. So you can edit off of any external drive. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can use a solid state drive, a regular spinning disk hard drive, you know, one terabyte Seagate external drive you can get for about 60 bucks, even a jump drive. And actually way back in the day when I edited some of my first ever videos, I used to edit off of a jump drive and it was a terrible experience. So I don't recommend doing that. But my point is you don't need necessarily a particular kind of drive to edit off of. Some things you wanna really consider though are the read and write speeds of that drive. Now, what does that mean? So write speed, a good example of that is um, when you drag and drop a file onto a drive and you're copying it on there, how long it takes or the, the speed that it copies on there would be at the write speed to the drive. And then the read speed is when you're trying to play a video that's already on the drive and you bring it up, you're trying to watch it. And that's an example of reading data from the drive. When you're editing videos, chopping them up, sliding them around, adding effects and all that stuff, it's pretty much continuous reading and writing. So ideally you want a drive that's really fast in both of those categories. I think you'd want something with speeds at least over hundred megabytes per second, reading and writing. Something else you wanna think about is what ports your computer has, because there are different speeds of USB ports. USB 3.0, 3.2, Gen 2, even USB 4.0 maybe coming out soon, not sure. Thunderbolt, there's a lot of different ports out there, and I got kinda off in the weeds on figuring out what my computer had. Turns out it has USB 3.0, and in just a second I'll talk about whether that's gonna be fast enough for you or not. I recommend using external SSDs for video editing, uh, rather than a spinning disk hard drive. The general rule of thumb is that SSDs are better for continuous reading and writing over you know, prolonged periods, whereas a spinning disk hard drive is more reliable for static backup. Like if it's just gonna sit in your closet and have files backed up onto it, spinning disk hard drive is probably great, but an SSD is better for applications like external drive video editing. The ones I recommend are the SanDisk Extreme Pros. These guys right here, I like them because they are pretty rugged. They are nice and small, they're rugged, they're kind of a rubberized texture, which feels great. You can just throw them in your bag and not worry about them getting damaged or anything because they're nice and durable. I'll put a link below for these. SSDs are more expensive than a external hard drive, so if you really are trying to cut costs, you can just get a cheap little hard drive, which I'll link below also. But these have been really great for me. I have had the 500 gigabyte, the one terabyte, and also I've used a couple of the four terabyte versions. They've all worked great for me. I've heard the four terabyte ones might have issues. I haven't experienced that, but anyway, one terabyte would probably be the way to go to get up and running with an external drive. What speeds do you need need for video editing? Obviously you can have a lot faster speed and it'll be more comfortable and fun, but what can you get away with? Do you need USB 3.2, Gen 2, or Thunderbolt, or you know whatever fastest ports there are out there? Those are great if you have them, and newer laptops probably have faster speeds in general without breaking the bank. But I can say USB 3.0 is totally adequate for any 1080p video editing you're doing. And I know that because I edited for pretty much two solid years on one of these external SanDisk Extreme Pros, editing 1080p video, and it really worked pretty well for me. It does start to fall short when you're talking about having sped up clips, maybe 20 or 30 times speed, 
then you're gonna start having some lagginess and stutteriness and stuff, or just outright not wanting to play it at all. But it really does a pretty good job. That works great for me. If you're talking about 4K video, you may start to have some issues, but there are some great workarounds that are pretty reliable and consistent. Things like making proxy files, which are lighter and easier to read and write, or just doing a lower resolution playback in your editor could help as well. USB 2.0, hate to tell you, but I'm thinking it's not fast enough. But that's gotta be a pretty old laptop or computer to only have USB 2.0 at this point. So the upshot of all this is, especially if you're a beginner and getting into video editing, maybe you're a kid, maybe you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of money to spend on an editing laptop, but you wanna start making some videos for YouTube or whatever, don't worry. You can upgrade your existing laptop, whatever you can get your hands on, as long as it's not an absolute dinosaur and only has USB 2.0, you should be able to plug in some kind of external drive and edit away pretty comfortably, at least certainly well enough to get you started and get you off the ground. The laptop I have, I'm hoping to upgrade fairly soon, especially if I need to be doing more editing on the road, but it's four years old. It doesn't have the fastest of fast ports. It's starting to fill up, but I'm able to still edit videos on it because I use external hard drives. So matter of fact, as soon as I finish filming this video, I'm gonna drop the files onto this SSD right here and start editing them because I might as well get going here while I'm chilling in Philadelphia waiting for my flight. <laughs> Let's check out a quick real life example editing in DaVinci Resolve on an external hard drive. Basically Resolve does not care where you store your footage. It considers it just another folder on your computer even if it's on an external drive. So you open up your project, you drag and drop your files from your external drive into your media pool and you're off to the races. Now obviously you do need to keep that external drive plugged into your computer while you're editing the videos. That's a, a big duh situation, though I definitely have forgotten a couple of times and tried to eject it. <laughs> if it's not attached when you open up the project, you'll just get media offline, red thumbnails everywhere. No big deal, just close down the project, plug in the drive and open the project again and you should be good to go. And you can feel free to eject the drive after you've closed down Resolve and if you need to put your laptop in your bag or whatever, can be inconvenient having the drive hanging out. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to do this when I first started editing off an external drive, but no problem at all. Resolve will be able to find the videos when you plug the drive back in. Editing in Premiere Pro is much the same. You can keep all the files on the external drive and load them in just like you would normally. It really doesn't care. When it comes to Apple systems, I'm not totally sure because I am not an Apple guy. If any of you guys have edited in iMovie or Final Cut on an external drive, comment below and let me know, let everybody else know what your experience has been. I'm pretty sure it is possible, but one thing I have heard is that you may need to create a project library on the external hard drive itself because that's kind of how it works with those softwares, but I'm not totally certain. Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you found value in this video, be sure to subscribe. Check out those links below if you want a good option for a solid state or hard drive to start with. And I just wanna encourage you, start where you are with the equipment you have. And external hard drives can go a long way to making a really meh computer into a workable video editing machine. Check out this video right here to learn about my backing up footage workflow. I'll see you guys over there.